We all know that feedback circuits can oscillate. We may even know some tricks of how to fix it. But wouldn't it be nice if our simulation tool could show us exactly what is happening and why? Welcome to LTSPICE 4 Stability of OPAM Circuits video. I am your host, Chris Loker. This video shows how to use the .ac analysis to look at open loop gain and phase of OPAM feedback circuits in LTSPICE 4. I will show a simple method how to break the feedback loop while maintaining the correct operating point. This will allow us to plot the open loop transfer function of the circuit and calculate the phase margin. I will show examples that apply this analysis to commonly used circuit fixes. Doing so will help to build intuition about why the fixes work. The circuit here shows a simple inverting amplifier circuit using Linear Technologies' new versatile precision op-amp, the LT6016. One of the simplest ways to look at the stability of this circuit is by applying an AC voltage source to the input of the circuit and plotting the output voltage. This shows us the closed-loop AC response of the circuit. We see that there is only a small amount of gain magnitude peaking, so the circuit looks pretty stable. However, this view does not tell us the phase margin of the circuit. For that, we need to look at open loop response. But how do we do that in LTSPICE? To convert the circuit from a closed loop simulation to an open loop simulation, we follow the following simple steps. Step 1, we are going to remove the input stimulus. That is because we want to look at dynamics around the feedback loop itself, and not the response from input to output. Step 2 is to break the loop at the op-amp input where the feedback happens. Usually this will be the inverting op-amp input. Step 3. Now that we've broken the loop, we can give the two new nodes unique names, such as FB for feedback and INM for minus input terminal. Step 4. Because we still want the circuit to find its correct DC operating point, we are inserting a 0 volt DC voltage source to connect the nodes again. That's right, we just disconnected it, but now we are connecting it again using a voltage source. This makes sure that DC-wise both nodes are the same potential, so that the circuit finds its correct operating point. Step 5, and this is where the magic happens. We now give this voltage source an AC stimulus of 1. Doing so forces the difference between node FB and node INM to be 1 in the AC analysis, but it does not force the ratio. In fact, the ratio of FB to INM will be determined by the circuit itself. The properties of the op-amp will determine how much the out node changes relative to the input node. The properties of the feedback network, in this case a simple resistor divider, will determine how much node FB changes relative to the out node. We now run the .ac simulation command in the usual way. But instead of plotting just one node, we are going to plot the ratio of the feedback node FB to the input node INM. There are various ways to do that. One way is to go to the plot plane, right click, go to add trace, and type the expression into the expression box. We type in V, parentheses, FB, divided by V, parentheses, INM, press enter or click OK. What we now see is the familiar looking open loop gain and phase response of an op-amp feedback circuit. We see high open loop gain at low frequencies, a roll off with a certain slope, and also a shift in phase. We can now use the waveform cursors to check where this open loop gain crosses 0 dB and look at what the phase is there. We see that the phase is about 56 degrees, and that would be the phase margin of this circuit. We will now apply this technique to an example that I hope will be instructive. Let's say that this op-amp circuit is asked to drive a capacitive load at its output of 750 picofarads. I am using the dot step parameter command to compare the circuit's loop response with and without the large capacitive load, and then I run the AC analysis. Now
Now, when I plot the same expression VFB divided by VINM, I see two curves for gain and phase. The blue curves are the ones with the capacitive load at 750 picofarads. I can toggle between the two curves using the up and down arrows. I can now see exactly how little phase margin the op-amp has with the large capacitive load. I can also see the shape of the gain and phase, which tells me the reason that the circuit has low phase margin. The gain temporarily flattens out compared to the original slope, while the phase takes a dive. This double whammy of flattening gain and collapsing phase causes the poor phase margin. Let's now look at the first step in a strategy to fix this. I remember something about a series resistor between the output and the load capacitance improving this issue. So I use again the dot step parameter command to compare side by side the loop gain and phase with and without the series resistor. I can see that the blue curve, which is the one with the series resistor, definitely improves the gain response. It now no longer flattens out like it did without the series resistor. However, the phase margin is still not good enough, because the phase rolls off too quickly. The final step to fixing this is by inserting a new capacitor, CFF, that bypasses R3 and R1 in the feedback loop. I again use the dot step parameter command and run the AC analysis to compare the loop gain and phase plots with and without this capacitor, and to my great joy I see that the blue curve shows that the phase rolls off much later, while the gain magnitude does not change very much compared to the situation before the capacitor was put in. The circuit now has a good phase margin again. Using the dot AC analysis to look at open loop response of feedback loops can be very useful to design with op-amp circuits, and I encourage LTSpice users to learn more about this command and others in the LTSpice4 help files. For more information or to download LTSpice for free, please visit us at www.linear.com/ltspice.